Yeah. So in this video, I'm going to talk about <clears throat> Aristophanes' play, Wasps. So this is another of Aristophanes' anti-democratic and meta-theatrical plays. <clears throat> so, if you've watched some of my previous videos about Aristophanes' plays, um, you'll know already that this is a recurring theme in Aristophanes. Um, in Wasps, the particular focus is on the Athenian judicial system. Uh, so the way that they tried legal cases, which for many of us today might not immediately seem all that anti-democratic, except that for the Athenians, um, the jury system was central to uh, their democratic process. Um, because they didn't have, like we have today in a country like the US or Canada or the UK or, or uh, any number of other countries, they didn't have a sort of official judicial system with judges and uh, police who investigated and detectives and things like this. What happened was one citizen would bring suit against another citizen and then in front of, they didn't even necessarily have a sort of codified body of laws uh, the way that we do today with, with statutes and things like this. Um, so one citizen would bring suit against another and then in front of a jury of their fellow citizens, each, uh, each of these men would try and make their case. And this was exclusively men, so that was one of the conditions of Athenian citizenship. Um, so the complainant would make their case that this defendant had committed some kind of offense. And the defendant would argue that either they were justified or they didn't do it or whatever it was. And then the jury of citizens would vote. And so it had all of the elements of Athenian political life. It was driven by rhetoric. It was, a, it was built on persuasion and it resolved issues through popular direct voting. So the attack on the Athenian propensity for, uh, for litigiousness is not just a sort of anti-legal thing, it is in fact an anti-democratic gesture. Um, but I actually want to start briefly with uh, Aristophanes' metatheatrical components and then sort of build into more of this anti-democratic component. Um, as we've seen in a couple of other Aristophanes plays like Knights and uh, I think Acarnians, he loves this sort of interlude where he praises himself. Uh, this is a standard sort of Aristophanes technique where at some point they just sort of step away from the action of the play and the chorus is basically like, hey everybody, Aristophanes is the best comic playwright ever and you're really dumb for not recognizing that before but if you now give him the prize for this uh, dramatic competition that will prove to everyone that you're smart. And so this is a, a kind of interesting one because he has a direct extended discussion of his play Clouds, which uh, I guess had premiered the year before this. Uh, so he says, or the chorus says, Last year he dared, to he dared to assail the hectic spectral sophist spooks who garroted your father, your grandfather strangled, on their beds at night, they glued together affidavit summons evidence until guiltless folk to litigate against guiltless folk to litigate. In terror, the innocent sprang from their beds, ran for help to the magistrate. But through, though a champion Heraclean, you'd got the you'd got to purify the state. Last year, you betrayed him when his clouds sought to disseminate novel notions. You missed the seed he sowed. With many a libation, he swears that never a clearer, cleverer comedy was presented to our nation. This you did not straightaway see, yours the shame. 
in wiser eyes my works approved. So again, we've got a sort of direct discussion of clouds, and you can take a look at my video for that following the link up there, um, with this sort of anti-sophist uh, thematic central to that play. But then we've also got a really interesting shift here, and I want to point this out, but I also want to put a caveat on this, because this is uh, the translation by Moses Hadass. And so this may or may not be reflected in the original uh, Attic dialect. But we move in the last line that I read from he did this, he dared, he swears, you betrayed him, to my works approved. So we've got, again, I mean, this is clearly Aristophanes writing to glorify Aristophanes, which he loves doing, but we've got that really interesting shift from the chorus speaking about Aristophanes in the third person to first person, my works approved. So that's an interesting uh, sort of breakdown. But we've also got another important metatheatrical moment in Wasps toward the beginning of the play, where basically uh, Xanthias, who's a slave, uh, there's Xanthias and Sosius who, who start the play out, and basically that's a sort of introductory bit. Um, Xanthias basically said, turns to the audience after they've had a bit of a, a discussion uh, and says, now, in order for you to, to even understand what's going on, I need to give you some background, basically. Um, and so he, he sort of dismisses some techniques that other comic poets have used to get cheap laughs or things like this in Aristophanes' view. Um, and he says, our old master is sick. So uh, there is uh, Philocleon, who's the older master, uh, who is a, is a supporter of the judiciary. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and there's Daily Cleon, who is uh, his son and is opposed to uh, the judiciary. And we'll talk more about that as well. But um, Xanthius talks about Philocleon's devotion to uh, serving on juries as an illness, an illness that the audience would not have guessed at. Uh, and he says, I'll tell you master's disease. He's a court lover like no one else. He loves judging and groans if he's not in the front row. Not a wink of sleep does he get at night, and if he dozes ever so little, his mind flutters around the lawyer's time clock the night through. So used is he to holding the ballot pebble that he awakens with three fingers pinched as if offering incense at new moon. If he sees scribbled on a doorway, I love Demos, um, her lamp's son, he scribbles beside it, I love ballot box. Once the cock crowed in the evening, he's been bribed by officials under scrutiny, he says, to wake me late. He shouts for his shoes immediately, supper is over, and he begin and he goes to court to sleep, glued to a post like a limpid. He's so strict he draws the long line to condemn everyone and comes home with nails full of wax like a bee. To make sure he'll never be short of voting pebbles, he keeps a beach at home. He's psychopathic. The more he's admonished, the more he judges. That's the man we're keeping bolted in. So there's more to this speech, but that's the sort of uh, the sort of key bit. So uh, Philocleon is dedicated to judging, and uh, his son Delicleon wants him to stop because he believes that it is bad and slavish for. Uh, Athenian citizens to go and sit in judgment. And so, um, what he does is actually somewhat interesting um, because 
he uh, confronts the chorus of wasps, uh, by which uh, Aristophanes sort of figuratively means uh, old men who still have their spears and swords and things from previous battles and, and still have that glory, but are now sort of dedicated to uh, to serving on juries and things like this. And what happens is the chorus claims that uh, Delecleon is basically a reactionary, that he's, he's sort of anti-democratic, he's in favor of tyranny and things like this. Um, and Delecleon argues that the charge of tyranny, the charge of being anti-democratic, has been so overused that uh, it's become almost a joke. And he actually says, uh, whatever issue is discussed, be it small or great, of tyranny and conspiracy incessantly you prate. Never before have these words been heard, not for half a century. Like herrings in the market stall, now they're common currency. If a trout is what you're after and refuse to purchase anchovy, grumbling the disgruntled anchovite, the gourmet favors tyranny. If an onion you wish to buy and your, and your fish a savory, the offended cabbage seller cries, I, you favor tyranny. Must Athens then be taxed, think you, to maintain your luxury? So he's, he's making these sort of claims that uh, if you can't, if, if people can't buy the type of expensive food that they want, they turn it into a political matter uh, and things like this, these sort of ridiculous uh, claims. And so Delecleon sets out to persuade his father to give up being a judge. Um, which is interesting and ironic because the use of rhetoric to persuade uh, is at the core of Athenian democracy. It's at the heart of, of what makes Athenian democracy function. And so Delecleon, in his attempt to sort of persuade uh, Philocleon and the, the chorus, that they shouldn't be participating in this cornerstone of Athenian democracy uses the tools of Athenian democracy to try and persuade them. Um, and he, he makes his case. Uh, so first Philocleon makes his case uh, for why he should continue judging, and then Delicleon makes his case. And one of the interesting things uh, that Delicleon argues in terms of uh, trying to persuade his father and the chorus is that the state takes in much more money than it pays out to the jurors. So a big part of Philocleon's argument is that the jurors get paid, which they did in ancient Athens. It was an important component um, of political service, judicial service, and things like this, because that helped ensure that even poorer citizens could take time out off of things like farming or uh, crafts or whatever it is that they did, and they could go and do their civic duty. Whereas if uh, citizens weren't paid, then only the rich would be able to take the time to do this. So this was a, a, a measure of equality. Um, and Philocleon argues that uh, the wages paid to judges are much lower than they should be for the service that they do, and therefore uh, Philocleon and, and the wasps, the chorus of wasps, shouldn't do it anymore. It's an interesting argument because what Delecleon argues or what Delecleon offers as, sort, as a sort of alternative doesn't sound all that luxurious. Uh, when he's explaining how he'll, he'll take care of his father, 
Uh, he says, I'll nurture him and see he's snug with what an old man can require. Porridge, dressing gown, or rug, a wench to stir his ebbing fire. So, I mean, basically it's a sort of, yeah, pops, go sit in the corner, we'll put a blanket on you so you don't get cold and you'll, you'll get a little bit of food kind of thing. Like, and I think that's actually really revealing because there was, so part of the thing that's important, I think, about Delecleon's sort of, oh, you're all, you all say uh, people are anti-democratic or, or people favor tyranny or whatever it was. There was actually a, a, a large number of opponents to democracy in ancient Athens. They often wanted to restore the power of the aristocracy. And so this idea of like, be anti-democratic because democracy is not uh, letting you live a life of luxury is really kind of an ironic one because a lot of Athenian citizens would not have benefited from a return to an aristocratic uh, rule. And I, we get that kind of in Delecleon's uh, idea of how he's going to treat his father. Um, so it's an interesting play. I maintain that it's an anti-democratic play, and I think Aristophanes across the board is anti-democratic. But there's also, there's also some elements here that make being anti-democratic not seem all that positive either. So it's an interesting play, I'll say that.